Hey, welcome back to Jones Metal Products. We've talked a lot about in all of our videos about hydroforming. Well, today we're gonna to do something very exciting. We're gonna talk about spinning. We're at E.H. Schwab in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and it, spinning is a very comparable forming method to hydroforming. So we wanted to take you through there. A lot of people have never seen these type of operations. So we're gonna take you through the factory and show you exactly how this is done. I've known the Harrison family for a long time, and they're one of the first spinners that I've ever run into. They're just wonderful people. Hey! Welcome, nice to see you. <laughs> How you doing? Great, thanks hey, for coming Chris. in. Hey Chris, so we're here today with Brad and Chris, and they're gonna teach us a lot about spinning. Are you guys ready to do the tour? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> when I think of spinning, there's hand spinning and then there's CNC spinning. So this would be CNC spinning to start. Right. So CNC spinning, obviously. Yes. It seems so simple. This is really easy, right? Anybody can do it? Yeah. I mean, as long as you have a skilled enough programmer. And any, about uh, 20 years experience? Yeah. I yeah. mean, that's what it, it's what it really comes down to and plays into is the, the skill of your, your programming guy. You okay. know. What you can see, too, is that the material flows both directions. The spinning passes oh. go down and back. It's not just bending the material, it's actually changing the molecular structure, flowing it both directions, getting it tightly against the tool. I always liken this to clay. You, know, you ever see yeah. clay that's going around on a table and it's like somebody has their thumb and they're just sort of, it, it seems a lot like that. But you don't do this with your thumb. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> has spinning been around historically because like you've been around since the 1929 our business is coming up on a hundred years spinning goes back to the ancient Romans actually really and even Paul Revere was a spinner really so Roman helmets and then in colonial times goblets and other drinking containers so metal, were... I guess sheets back then I wonder how they even did that you'd have yeah. to roll it in somehow that's amazing. So over here is our hand spinning department. Okay. Ooh, is this the one where I might try to... <laughs> Are you going to let me try and spin one? What do you think? I love stuff like this. <laughs> Tom, he wants to spin one. back. What's that? No. I want, but I don't want to ruin that one. You've already put too much time in it. No, don't start it from a blank. Yeah, that'd be too dangerous. Can I do this one? Can you do one and see if you can get the hang of it? I'll be done in about two minutes. That'd be awesome. Because <laughs> it's going to be a disaster. I know that. Who knows? I might end up being really good at it. Well, they might, they might hire me. Spinners, yeah. so. We're always hiring good people. What happens if like a beginner just goes down one side you and goes one direction. You typically tear through the material yeah. if you do that. I've seen newbies try this sort of thing and it, it usually ends in a disaster. Tom, do you spin in your sleep? Do you dream about spinning? I used to be a shorter cook when I was a kid and sometimes I'd wake up in the middle of the night I was making a hamburger or dropping some french fries or something like that. That is really cool. Do you also use that like on your bad employees if they're not keeping up? <laughs> you can see in this case, it's a steel tool. We also do phenolic and wooden tooling depending on okay. the quantity of the item, if it's a prototype. Nice. That's one of the benefits of spinning is the tooling is relatively inexpensive compared to other processes. So we can start with a wood tool that's a certain geometry. If we need to cut it down to modify the part, we can do that at a minimal expense. Okay. You gotta give them some type of hinters here, okay. Tommy. Don't use your arms, it's all on your shoulders. All the shoulders. You know, if you notice, I've never, I've never bent my arms. Okay, so when you pull this this way, it gets, it goes in tighter, right? Yes, whatever you so I want to start in. This is side to side, this is in and out. Okay. And again, how long does it take to learn to be really good at this? I've been doing this for 15 years. 15 years. I've been doing this for 15 years. 15 years. So 15 years. Uh, 15 seconds. This is the difference. 
All right, here we go. And I want to go all the way out? Yes. Okay, it's really light pressure. I'm probably doing too light. Okay, I can feel it. You'll feel solid where I was on, and then this feels a little bit more spongy. I haven't ruined it yet. Well, I just put a big dent in it. Okay. Not horrible? No. Like scale of 1 to 10, negative 5? Um, I'm going really slow. Don't pay me to tell you you're doing a 9. There you go. That's not horrible. Or the knees down, the reports going out looks so great. Okay, you did it really fast. And it, I'm probably not putting enough pressure into it, right? You are not, sir. Okay. So we'll let it rip. How's that? Better? Just a little bit. I'm using my arm, so like you said, not to do that. I mean, you can. You'll just be really tired. Really tired. Five minutes. Five minutes. You can see it's pretty low. Look at that. Ooh. It hasn't destroyed yet. I really thought I would have destroyed it. That's not horrible. It's still round. I've <laughs> I've seen people do this and it ends up getting all waffly or something like that. Okay. Here's the okay. oh. <laughs> Yeah, this would really wear me out. <laughs> but, So like if you brought 20 people in that, let's say we're athletic, how many people out of the 20 could actually learn how to do this? Or is it one out of 100? It's supposed to be probably about 10 days to learn how to stand right. Just to stand one. right. I really thought I would have ruined it by now. All right, I'm gonna stop there. I haven't hurt anybody. That was cool. There, you got one thing. I really, yeah, I really thought I would have ruined it in about five seconds. So I'm watching him do it really quick, really smooth as compared to me. So you get how many pieces an hour on him doing this? Like 20? 15? So with me doing it, two bad parts? Two bad parts an hour? going to be good, but I will say two. <laughs> There's a real, it seems like there's a real fine line of like pressure. How much pressure do you put on it? Because you got to push enough so it moves the material. But if you push too much, then it's going to rip. And that's the feel that takes five years to figure out. Yeah. And then probably like hydroforming, you go to a different material and that line between not enough pressure and break is probably gets thinner and thinner. And then you go to a different roller, which is a different radius, which changes your pressures all again. Yeah. I'm just telling you, I've, I've seen this now probably 20 times that I'm, I'm just always impressed. Oh, I'm kind of like, man, that worked me up. Yeah. I was kind of nervous about that. Can you do that? Can What's you spin that? that? Uh, I've tried. It's not, it's, uh, <laughs> no. The, the simple answer is no. Because I would want to sneak in at night and try it, you know? Yeah. No, it, it definitely... It's one of those things like I'd really like to learn, but at the same time, I don't have five years to figure it out. See, I love stuff like that. I just, I love manufacturing. I love black art stuff that you really take skill to, to learn how to do it. And you're really making a difference in this world. How else would those people get those parts? Right, the process yeah. lends yeah. itself to that kind of part. Yeah. Well, hey guys, thanks for having me out. You don't, you don't know what this means to me. I hope people have learned today that spinning, first of all, is a very cool operation. You're doing some things that basically no other capability can do, so that's awesome. I guess as a last favor, when I'm thinking about it, I'd really like to try spinning one more time. I think I can make a good part. I think we'll give you a shot. Tom's going to be like, oh, man. So we're getting our second chance at spinning. This time is gonna be perfect. It almost seems like Tom's pulling it in front of the driveway and I'm just kind of driving it in. <laughs> All right, I'm watching the master this time. I think I've got it. Easy peasy, this is... <laughs> Easy peasy. All right, here we go. A few moments later. I don't know how people do this all day. This would be quite a workout. 12 seconds later. I am exhausted. Two seconds later. I think this is my last pass. He might still be able to save this part. There we go. Can you save that? That's you, not bad. Not bad? You didn't buckle it. That's there you go. That's awesome. We have some applications up front. I'll sign it, man. I'm ready. I can do this. 
Do you have jobs here where you only have to do it for like an hour a day or <laughs> would you have to do this all day? Thanks everybody for coming out. We really enjoyed our trip today to EH Swab. We were just trying to show you different forming capabilities that you can do and how, you know, sometimes you don't understand hydroforming until you view it in context of other forming methods. There are other forming companies that we can go see like stampers, fabricators, drop hammers. If you would like to see us to do a video of another forming method, drop something in the comment section below and we'd be happy to do that. Thank you for watching Jones Mountain.